This is news on Good News Catholic Communications. I am Tonya St. Louis Lawrence. Coming up in this edition, Bishop Clyde Harvey calls for decisive action for the liberation of Haiti as heads of government within CARICOM calls for calm. Parents are being called upon to ensure that students are productively engaged during the summer vacation. Outgoing Chairman of CARICOM Dr. Keith Rowley thanks members for sharing COVID-19 vaccines with each other. Windows women claim victory in the first ODI over Pakistan. We will have the details of these and more when we return. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Drop by any one of our eight locations today. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Welcome back. Bishop of the Diocese of St. George's in Grenada, Clyde Martin Harvey, has called on CARICOM to take decisive action following the assassination of that country's president earlier this week. Bishop Harvey, in joining several regional and international nations in condemning the barbaric act, has described Haiti as a nation crying out for liberation, not only from its own internal issues, but as well as from the advantage taken by well-known exploiters, which continues to keep the people in unimaginable poverty. Haiti's president, Jovenel Moyes, was assassinated in the early hours of Wednesday, July 6th. Seventh. You know, and therefore we have to say, Haiti, I'm sorry, yes, but Haiti, what can I do? What difference can I make? And therefore, for all the CARICOM leaders who sat down yesterday and talked about Haiti, we wait to see what action will come. Because again, we have diplomats who, can, who have been part of the Haitian story. We have priests who have lived in Haiti and who know the situation. We must get together and see how we can help our Haitian brothers and sisters. And perhaps if CARICOM and its agencies can get together and come up with a plan, they must be bold enough even to expose the bigger countries who quite literally are raping Haiti. We can't sit by and let that happen. And God raise up in Haiti, and I pray, I mean, as a bishop, I pray that God might raise up bishops because under the Duvalier regime and so on, there have been bishops who stood forcefully and said, this must stop. And there are bishops now in Haiti who are working. But when you're working, as I know only too well, when you're working at that level for the liberation of a people, you must also be working to secure that future once liberation comes. Because you could liberate people, free them from one dictator into the hands of another from one mess into another mess, and that is not what Haiti needs right now. Bishop Harvey calls on parishioners to commit to prayers for reconciliation and peace in Haiti. Holy Mass was celebrated in honor of the people of Haiti following the weekly program Conversation with the Bishop on Thursday. I don't know what the assassination of Prime Minister of President Moise means. Maybe it might be something that will turn out for the good. But the Haitian people continue to suffer. And God says, I'm sorry. Because God's hands are tied, because Haitians and other people at the highest levels continue to refuse to act for justice, for peace, in a spirit of love. Meantime, CARICOM in a statement issued after Wednesday's meeting following the assassination of Haiti's President Jovenel Moise declared that the heads of government are shocked and saddened by the assassination of a member of the CARICOM family, His Excellency Jovenel Moise, during the early hours of July 7, 2021. 
Heads of government strongly condemned this abhorrent and reprehensible act that comes at a time of deep turmoil and institutional weakness in the country. They called for the perpetrators to be apprehended and brought to justice and for law and order to prevail. In light of Haiti's membership of CARICOM and the family ties that bind the people of Haiti and CARICOM together, CARICOM expresses its willingness to play a lead role in facilitating a process of national dialogue and negotiation to help the Haitian people and their institutions to craft an indigenous solution to the crisis. They call on the people of Haiti to remain calm and to overcome the differences and unite at this moment of national peril. Heads of government extend condolences to the family of President Moise and the government and people of Haiti. As a mark of respect, the member states of the community and the CARICOM secretariat will fly the national flags and the CARICOM standard at half-mast for three days from Wednesday as well as the day of the funeral. Concerns were also expressed by the regional grouping for the president's wife who is being treated at a U.S. hospital. Indeed, a very sad situation there unfolding in Haiti. Moving on now, educators in the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States are advised to collaborate with their own experts and use the free global resources at their disposal to develop a post-COVID-19 sustainable education system. Delivering remarks to the Virtual OECS Commission Sustainable Development Movement Summit on Sustainable Leadership in Education, a 21st century imperative last week, Dr. Camille Rutherford, Associate Professor in the Faculty of Education and Vice the Provost of Strategic Partnerships and International Outreach at Brooke University in Canada, urged the participants to save time and money by building local capacity. While governments have traditionally sought advice from consultancies from external sources, this can be a very colonial approach. After the initial capacity building, there is no need for people like me, as the region has the ability to develop and implement an education system that ensures all students are able to assess their true role in the global world, the Jamaican-born professor stated. The summit was moderated by Grenada's OECS SDM Ambassador Jonathan Lacret, who noted there is need for a greater level of coordination as policies are being developed, divorced from what is happening with an entrenched political atmosphere. Amy J.W. Jones, a local author, is among a list of published authors in Grenada who are members of the Grenada Association of Published Authors. Jones was a guest on Good News Catholic program, the Conference of Churches of Grenada, the CCJ Hour, with host Pastor Wendy Ann Ruffin. Jones explains the difference in the work of the Writers Association and the Published Authors of Grenada. The Writers Association of Grenada has been around for many years, mm. many, many years. Esther O'Neill, I think, if, I'm, if I could be and wrong. And that's an author. Mm -hmm. Right. She's also uh, used to be a lecturer at Tam CC. Okay. It, during her days, they started that group. Mm -hmm. I can't be corrected. But the group is, was just created to encourage Grenadians to write and to promote literacy. So they've had annual events. They have voices. There's a there's a series that they they have voices of the crying, you the daring you, and poets performers. They come out every year, most time around June, mm -hmm. um, to promote poetry and promote writing. Okay. So that's basically about the Writers Association, and it is functioning. It's functional right now, and it's open to persons who want to be a part of it. Okay. And the published authors of Grenada started just uh, about a year and a half ago about oh, two so years that's very new right so mm. it's we've we've noticed uh, mr ambrose and those that are really heading or spearheading the group mm -hmm. they've noticed that we do have a lot of published authors in the country right so they just wanted to find a common ground yes. to get everyone to come together okay so as of present what we're doing is we're traveling around grenada and just uh -huh. we're having pop-up book sales so all that we're selling is Grenadian art, Grenadian books, oh, that is and great. persons are encouraged to come out wherever we are, wherever we pop up, mm -hmm. come out and check out our books. Jones highlighted the exemplary work of other Grenadian authors. 
just recently we had a young lady in she's currently she's Grenadian currently in the States published a book a story telling a story about a battle with cancer and how she overcame mm. and about two or three months ago we had Kiana that's another young um, person who would have published as well a children's book Great. so you'd be surprised before you blink there's somebody else yes. coming out with something else that is so cool <laughs> there are avenues and i always encourage persons young mm -hmm. as well as old if you need information about self-publishing because it's kind of the easier road to go to oh yeah and and cheaper Canadian amy jw jones explains her published journey beyond fables poetry is my baby this is my first book Mm -hmm. And it was written in over the, the, the period of 2010 to 2013. Mm -hmm. It was published in 2000, March of 2014. Mm -hmm. Let's just right? show it. So. Right. So it is a poetry book, very small, mm -hmm. easy to read. And it's just, it's actually written for women. Mm. Yes. I have a um, section, the book into four pieces. Mm -hmm. And you're to mothers, to black women, the struggles of women, and this thing called love. Remember I said we, we're talking Grenadian folklore, we're talking... La Jamblas? Yes. Oh, well, yeah, See? but I just wasn't thinking that. That's right. Okay, yeah, but so it's yeah, night time. came to mind. It's night time, yes. and she's in a big, long dress, a strand. And of and course, she's pulling that guy along, right, that's and what the story says. If, yeah, and you yeah. know, oh. to the river, that's where she goes, uh, over oh. a cliff. Oh, my God. And um, the oh. one human foot and the cow foot, so... Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> Our folklore. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Our folklore. But um, this this book began as just a blog. I began writing it because I, while I was studying in Trinidad, I just really wanted to come home that semester. Right. I, I was real homesick. And I had spent about three years or so already. And I was like, God, for some reason, I just needed to be home. But mm -hmm. well, I couldn't. So I just started writing a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. something in our uh, Grenadian language. And here comes this idea. My friend says one day, you know, I'm reading this blog every day. Put a, put a story yeah. together. Good news, the Catholic Communications extend congratulations to published author Amy J.W. Jones and all members of the Writers Association and published authors of Grenada. Bishop Clyde Harvey has called on parents to play a more dominant role in providing adequate opportunities for children during the summer vacation. This as the curtains will come down on the term following several challenges including managing the global pandemic and disruptions due to work to rule industrial actions. Bishop Harvey calls for continued partnership between students, parents and teachers in ensuring that students are productively engaged while of course enjoying some much deserved time off particularly at secondary level, but beginning with those who have just had CPA, CPA, yes. I think parents have to ask, what can I do with and for my child over these two months that will enable the child to come to September saying, wow, I'm a better person. I know this and I know that. I'd love to see those who speak different languages, taking a group of children and teaching them Spanish, for example, or French. Ah, ça va bien, huh? You know, esta me gusta mucho. <laughs> it is, you know, children are really well placed to learn a second language. Bishop Harvey shared his vision on how the church itself can contribute to positive engagement of children at this particular time. I'm hoping that by the time we come around to next year, that the church as church will have so looked at and reorganized the education system that we manage that we will have a lot of these things in place. Right now, we're still feeling our way with that. COVID has not exactly encouraged us. But it's very, very important. And if I may speak to all, any little children listening, but especially to grandmothers listening, you know, encourage a child to do something, you know. If you know uh, somebody in fifth form or somebody at MCC who has a skill, get them to teach the child the skill. And all of you, um, people who are people of leisure. You, you have very little to do in terms of your life is safeguarded by whatever you have in terms of wealth and so on. See the holiday time as a time to reach out. Bishop Harvey reiterated the benefits to be derived from active and less formal learning during his weekly program, Conversation with the Bishop, on Thursday. So let's 
first of all, try to encourage in our children a commitment to vacation learning, to find something they love doing and learn how to do it. Even sports, to really take the time to perfect the sporting skills that you have. But I would like to see more of the communication skills becoming involved in that. It would be great if at secondary school level, every child who did French and Spanish left secondary school speaking fluently, you know? And if I might put in a little plug, Creole. I know I'm um, Dr. Um, Joseph. Joseph. Dr. Yeah. Joseph, I understand. She, over the years, has had some classes in Creole for children. Actually, I could go and sit in one of those classes now myself, you know. But these are things which you would be surprised at how they build up character, at how they build up self-confidence. Still to come, Marian Devotion on Sunday, led by Holy Family River Sally. Stay with us. The next Marian devotion is scheduled for this Sunday, July 11th, and will feature the role of grandparents within the family structure. Holy Family River Sally will lead this Sunday's devotion. Deacon Cecil St. Louis will share on the topic, Grandparents' Strength and Hope of Caribbean Family. In this vein, parishioners are reminded to submit ideas as to how best the day can be observed. Pope Francis has designated this year as the Year of the Family. The call for prayers and focus on family life is twinned with the year of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church and the family. Parishioners are requested to submit suggestions to the Diocese Secretariat in an effort to shortlist appropriate ways of honoring the extended family and the role of grandparents. Individual families are also asked to come up with their own unique plan in recognition of grandparents. The spirit of cooperation and good neighborliness continues to be one of the Caribbean community's hallmarks of surviving global challenges. That's according to outgoing CARICOM chairman Dr. Keith Rowley as he thanked member states for sharing the excess coronavirus vaccines with each other. I take this opportunity, colleagues, to thank my CARICOM member states who shared vaccines with Trinidad and Tobago and with other member states. Your gracious act of good neighborliness during what has been a challenging time is deeply and sincerely appreciated, Rowley said. The Trinidad and Tobago leader noted that CARICOM has been one of the leading voices calling for there to be equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines. Rowley said he spent most of his six-month stint as CARICOM chairman advocating on the region's behalf for access to vaccines. The Prime Minister added that he believes none of the member states would have been able to withstand the effects of COVID-19 alone. Outside of COVID-19, Rowley noted that CARICOM members are the first to respond to each other's needs yearly following the devastating impacts of natural disasters. That's it for the major developments. A look at the field of play when we return. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Drop by any one of our eight locations today. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you.
Welcome back, sporting fans. Captain Stephanie Taylor led a masterclass with both a bat and ball as the West Indies women defeated Pakistan women by five wickets in the CG Insurance First One Day International at the College Cricket Ground in Antigua on Wednesday. Taylor won the toss and elected to bowl first. It was a spinner's day for West Indies who won the toss as Taylor and Anisha Mohammed combined for five wickets between them. Taylor took a three for 29 and Vice Captain Mohammed 2 for 31. The West Indies bowlers ensured that the Pakistan batters never got going, with the exception for Nidar and Asia Javar, who scored 55 and 46 respectively. Haley Matthews and Kishana Knight opened the West Indies run chase, but were both out inside of 12 overs. Kesaya Knight and Taylor posted a 23-run partnership before the former departed for 19 from a patient 44 deliveries and Deandra Dotton had a short nine-run stay at the wicket. It was the last two partnerships that Taylor formed with Shidan Nation for the fifth wicket and another 46-run partnership with Brittany Cooper that took the West Indies women to victory. Cooper had her share of lofty shots off the Pakistan bowlers, finding the boundary ropes three times. Needing one run to win, Taylor flicked one of the legs to take her team to victory and bring up her sixth ODI century. A recap of the headlines when we return. Now for a recap of the headlines, Bishop Clyde Harvey calls for decisive action for the liberation of Haiti, as heads of government within CARICOM calls for calm. Parents are being called upon to ensure that students are productively engaged during the summer vacation. Outgoing Chairman of CARICOM, Dr. Keith Rowley, thanks members for sharing COVID-19 vaccines with each other. When these women claim victory in the first ODI over Pakistan? On behalf of all of those who made this newscast possible, I am Tonya St. Louis Lawrence. Thanks for staying with us. <music>